Hi there, today I'm going to do a review of this, the Think Tank Pro Streetwalker version 2 bag. I'd like to tell you its volume because uh, that's a key part of uh, uh, choosing a bag is how big it is that determines how much kit you can get in it. But unfortunately I can't find anywhere uh, any mention of, of its size. And that unfortunately is where it's led itself down with my requirements for it. So this is going back to the uh, shop where I bought it. I bought it online so you don't get to uh, try them out but luckily the returns policy is very good. So um, I'll show you around it inside it uh, in a moment. I'm going to show you some other bags that I use as a comparison uh, but instead I think I'm going to look at the Mindshift backlight which is made, it's like a sister company, I don't quite know how it works but it's sort of they, they are affiliated with Think Tank. Um, Think Tank make very good bags, very good quality, very ro robust bags. Um, so I'm going to uh, possibly order the um, Mindshift um, backlight in 26 litres. Um, it's, it's a balance. I want to get as much kit in it as possible, but equally I don't want to cripple myself with the, with the sheer weight. I want to be able to take a camera and lens, a couple, two other lenses. I normally use a 7300. Uh, I'm, I'm with Canon. And, uh, you know, Canon is the brand I shoot with just because I'm familiar with it. Um, so that's my trusty 7300, a great lens. I use a 2470mm there. And uh, and sorry, this one here's got the uh, RF to uh, sorry RFEF adapter on it. In case you wonder what the black bit on the end is there. And then um, I have the new RF fifteen thirty five mil lens for my Canon R five, which just recently has arrived. That lens, the fifteen thirty five, is a cracker. Really highly recommend that. Um, is it two point F two point eight F? I think. Um, I think that is what it is. Um, so, okay, so let's go to the bag. Uh, I'll unzip it first and show you the internal compartment. And again, I'll show you why I think it's let me down. So we use um, use the picture. It comes with this nice picture just so you can visualise what, what's going on inside. It gives you a number of different layouts. Is there one on the other side? No, it's a bit of a gump on the other side. So um, my problem is my R5 does not fit there when it's got the L bracket on. I was usually doing long exposures, uh, night photography, um, and it doesn't fit into that space well at all. There is room for a couple more lenses, um, as you can see. Um, I will be taking uh, filters, uh, lots of batteries, uh, a time, all sorts of things. Uh, I think this just is not enough space. I do love the compartments that you get with the um, think tanks. So the clear pockets with the zips, very good for your memory cards and other filters, small filters, uh, batteries, that kind of jazz. So let's pull that down. So that's what it looks like there. One crazy thing, so many of the think tank um, bags come with this uh, rain cover, um, loose like this, which takes up a pocket, which is uh, rather crazy in my in my. Uh, thinking. Uh, most other camera bags have a little uh, little stowaway area in the base of it where you just push it out of the way, compresses it nicely and doesn't take up internal space. So not quite sure uh, why Think Tank um, do that. It's not what I would do um, if I was a bag designer. Now which brings me to another point actually about the design is uh, for me what I like, I like rear entry more than anything else. My wife is over there laughing at me. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I like to get to my cameras from the back of the bag. I can't be trusted with a side entry pocket. Um, I've had lenses fall out, cameras fall out. I uh, had a pair of um, Inspire 2 batteries fall out straight into a rock pool a few months ago. That was a costly error. Um, so I like the, uh, I like the um, entry to the camera to be from the back of the bag. It also means when I'm in a wet, horrible, damp, sandy environment, I can put the bag down, open it up and get to my cameras and keep everything safe. Also, I was out, for instance, photographing some storm waves last night and I quite like to be able to open up the bag and have the actual flap of the bag as a sort of bit of protection from the wind and rain as I'm changing lenses over as well. 
Um, so there's a few very um, thin pockets at the front, hard to get anything too bulky in there. And there's this one here. Okay, so that's quite a nice pocket there, which um, folds sort of further out and you can put keys and uh, pens and memory cards in there. So that's a nice wee pocket. Side pockets open up and sort of splay open, so you can put bigger things in there and a drinks bottle in there, whether thermos uh, or water. And similarly on the other side as well is another um, folding open pocket. Uh, this one has less inside, it's got a strap if you want to put your keys on it. So that's pretty well the pocket. So I'm going to whisk through this because I want to show you some other bags. Uh, I'm also an osteopath as well as professional photographer and drone pilot. Um, and this one does have a very nice back. I can recommend the quality of the back, nice uh, venting to uh, reduce the amount of sweating and well padded. And the shoulder straps are very well padded with some D-rings, uh, chest, chest clasp. There is a, a waist belt, which I can highly recommend on any bag is to have a waist belt because you can then um, have the weight going through your pelvis and your hips rather than through your low back if you do have some back issues. Uh, and this one you can uh, upgrade from a narrow waist belt to a thicker one, which you can buy separately. And you just slot it through a little gap on the back there. Okay, oh, and there's finally, um, also, often there are clues in the size of things or, or little sort of hidden details in, in other bits of information. So this bag can take a 10 inch uh, iPad type scenario, just 10 inch in this back pocket here. 10 inches isn't very big, um, so it's hardly a 15-inch laptop. So that's sort of a, quite an indicator as to how wide the bag is. It's not very wide at all, it's very narrow. Okay, so that's that bag there. Um, I mean, it's very well made, very well constructed. Zips of very good quality. Handle, grab handle on the top, very good indeed. Um, but just too small uh, for my needs and um, not the rear entry. Uh, so this is my normal camera bag. This is a sort of a Chinese knockoff of a Polar Pro bag. I'm not sure. Oh no, this one is Polar Pro. Sorry, this one's not a knockoff. I didn't realise I had bought a Polar Pro. Um, um, but the, you can get identical ones as this uh, from uh, Amazon, or certainly used to. And as I like my bags to be, this one is rear entry. And, uh, but unfortunately, the things I don't like about it is that things like the uh, um, little area there for your um, iPad, uh, when I've got an iPad in there, if I'm doing a bit of drone work, if I drop the bag open, psh, iPad's on the floor, on the ground, no good at all. Um, nice size area in there, as you can see. Uh, and you can do any combination of uh, uh, layout as you want. And then a zipped internal pocket there as well for batteries and filters. Don't even know what I've got in here. All sorts in there. Um, okay, uh, this one's even got a lock on it for uh, sort of an internationally accepted lock, so airlines can open it if they want to. If that's a feature that you want, rain cover in the base, as I spoke about. I said most most camera bags, that is a fairly normal feature to have a rain cover in the base, um, and uh, two large side pockets. Got a little three-legged thing tool on the end there, which I love uh, for. I vir uh, virtually always have an L bracket on my cameras, and it's uh, they can become loose as you're working on it. So, little uh, little tool there. So that's um, the camera bag that I currently use, and I like it. But I just uh, there's a few features, particularly of sort of storage and memory cards, I don't like. Now this one. I should have looked up what uh, it is. I'll put the name down below, actually, I think. So this is made below Pro. I think it's only the 250 model. It has a very large zipped area at the back there. I keep uh, a landing pad for a M M Mavic there. And there's a small camera compartment that's with side accessibility. So this is the bag that I had my bits and bobs fall out of. Um, not very roomy in there, so it's one one camera with a lens on it, maybe one le extra lens, two at a push, struggling to get a bag with the filters uh, in there as well. Uh, struggle to get a remote with a um, 
the bracket that goes on the 300 mil lens there. Um, so it's not the greatest amount of space um, for the camera, but it does have a handy pouch at the top there, which you can put, so I can put my Mavic in there, I could put uh, a puffer jacket, whatever in there. So kind of because I'm out and about, I'm in woods, I'm on the beach, it, uh, and weather changes, it's nice to have a space to stuff a coat uh, or a towel or something like that. Maybe if, maybe even my swimmers, in case of, uh, I can go in the sea if when I'm out photographing. Um, so I like to have a little bit of storage space um, uh, for other things apart from camera equipment. I guess I kind of want everything, and that is very uh, a difficult thing to get. But I'm sure with searching, um, I will find something that's nearer the mark. This bag is very nice. I say low pro. Uh, and two pockets at the front, handy for batteries and um, memory cards. So I'm going to look at the, there's an F-stop, um, uh, what's uh, Lotus I'm going to look at. Um, I'm not sure whether that includes uh, the inner, uh, is it ICUs, is it called? So sort of the little container areas that they have, uh, which you have to buy separately, I believe. Sometimes some shops sell them with. Uh, it's an expensive camera bag. I'm going to look at that. I think it's the 31 litre what I'm looking at and there's also Mindshift uh, is the other one I'm going to look at as well. Uh, between the two hopefully uh, I will find the right one. If you've got any suggestions for bags I should look at let me know. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. I'm trying to keep it um, short and sweet for you and uh, I've well I don't have to try not to say the word super in front of every other word like some reviewers seem to be struggle with. And I don't have to use the phrase off the bat uh, in every other sentence like some reviewers use. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one. And uh, subscribe if you want to watch more, if you've got any questions. Or you can help me with some information. I'd be grateful. Thank you for watching. And cut. Thank you very much. It's a take, everybody. Yes, I said rear entry and got a giggle from my wife. Huh? I have a rugby. Uh, a steadying finger from a friend. It's not that rude. <laughs>